This talk from Jen is going to go down in the flannels of history as one of the best talks you've ever seen. <laughs> Out of conference. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, with no further ado, Jen Schiffer. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, this is my third jQuery comp. Um, last year, in June, it was my first time ever speaking at a conference. And uh, here I am uh, again. My also my first time in Chicago. So thanks for having me. Um, at all my previous talks at jQuery conference, I usually talk about art and code. Uh, and if you saw the talk description, uh, it said I was going to be talking about tables. So don't worry. It will be about tables, but there will also be some art and some code and stuff like that. Um, and I will try not to take forever because uh, we are hoping to go party later. And I don't want to keep you from that. Uh, so we're going to talk about tables and why. Because tables are the hardest problem in computer science. Nice. So we've dealt with tables on the web since the beginning of it. Um, I've dealt with tables through all of the work that I've been doing uh, recently. But tables are everywhere, because data is everywhere. It needs to be presented as information. Uh, and tables are the most organized and probably easiest way to display data so that people who aren't web developers, who are just readers, can read that data in a familiar way and get some sort of story from what we're trying to portray with them. But tables aren't perfect. Um, they're ugly. There's too much manual configuration, lots of tags within tags, a lot of nesting. It's really difficult to look at a, t a blob of uh, table code in HTML and understand what's going on. Um, they're really bad when it comes to trying to make your sites responsive. And that's like all the rage these days, I hear. And also, it's really easy to um, make a site not accessible by using tables um, or your slides not accessible on a screen, which is pretty chill. <laughs> so thank you for having me. It's been great. Yay. What? We are at the jQuery conference. I love Chicago. The street art is really awesome. If you haven't been to the Art Institute, that's my boss, Boaz. Um, <laughs> if you haven't been to the Art Institute, you should go. It's really great. Um, I have to go back again because it's really big. But take the scenic route there because there's a lot of really cool art outside. And I think it's awesome that Chicago has all this public art that people can enjoy, um, much like my slides. Um, So this is like not chill at all. <laughs> oh, it's super chill. So yeah, um, so tables. How many people here um, build sites that deal with statistics or some sort of data or oh, whatever? OK. Uh, and how many of you deal with tables that have like maybe like 2,000 rows that show on that same page? And understand like what a pane it is to display it in a way that's viewable. Um, on the page, um, and also that everything doesn't load insanely. OK, cool. Same. Me too. Um, how many people here use like JSON to load your data into a table? It's not like manually typed into the document? Cool. I'm going to talk about that as well. <laughs> this is just like. My, my computer looks like it's attached, but Are your slides online? my slides are on the internet, yeah. OK, cool. My computer is connected to the internet. Oh, sweet. How many people here use the internet? Whoa! <laughs> awesome. There we go. So thank you. Uh, so yeah, so slides are not accessible. Um, but fortunately, we have hot local jQuery tables I'm about to bring to your area. And that's what we're going to talk about. My name is Jen Schiffer. And sometimes technology does not work for me. Uh, some people know me as just Jen Schiffer um, or Jen Money Dollars, because I'm literally a cartoon character and I get cool names for it. Um, I work at Boku. 
um, which is, explains that, that Bill coupon that was pretty awesome. Um, uh, I'm an open web engineer there, and I have been for quite some time, um, a few months. And I am also the creator of make8bitart.com, where I made a tool for drawing pixel art because I am an 8-bit pixel artist, and I wanted something that could help me out with it. Uh, and, and pixel art has a lot to do with tables as well because everything is laid out in a cool little grid with rows and columns. So we're not just talking about tables that you put stuff on or tables that you put data into, but also tables that you use to display things in a certain way. So things are going to get fun and hairy. Um, I used to work at the NBA, the National Basketball Association, before Boku, where I worked on stats.nba.com. Actually, I think I proposed this talk on the day I put in my two weeks notice there. So, <laughs> so I'm going to be talking a little bit about my work on tables uh, here. Um, I was just announced as a committer to CouchDB, which deals with tables. Uh, and uh, W3 schools, I don't work there, but I think that would be the one place I would quit Boku to work at, just an <laughs> FYI. Um, so I can make this become an actual reality and not something I have to fake. <laughs> I deleted, <laughs> I deleted Photoshop from my computer in a state of angst, and therefore this is how I have to like fake things. It's still, and this is my actual literal table that I bought at home, um, and I have like a little cool little puzzle on it. I was working on like my slides and stuff. Um, and so I like tables of all sorts. This is my first dining table. I moved to Jersey City a few months ago, and I have like a big kitchen. I needed a table to work on, so now I've got one to put stuff on while I work on stuff. Um, here's <laughs> makeabitart.com just to show you again um, just the grid style for pixel art. Uh, and these are just like all the things that I work on that deal with tables and grids. So therefore, um, I can say that grids are pretty neat, and I love them. Um, and therefore, table is my favorite HTML element. And that's not satire. That's actually real life. Um, but things can get ugly. There's a lot of manual configuration, not responsive, not accessible. That, that would have been a great cue for the slides to go down again. Um, so this talk is not just about the art of the table and how tables are made in history, but it's all in all a love letter um, to tables. And even though tables are great, um, they do have to get their craft together. Um, and so I'm going to talk about ways that we can do that. But I want to start with the history of tables. Um, so table is derived from the French word table. Um, you might have heard that from the uh, store, sur la table, which means on the table. Um, the old English tabelle, um, and Latin word tabula, which means a board, a plank, a flat top piece. Um, the use of tables dates back to the ancient Egyptians, and they created tables out of wood, um, the Syrians made out of metal, Grecian out of bronze, uh, the Romans had really awesome like animal etchings in their tables, uh, and if you want to read more about tables, Encyclopedia Britannica is a really good quick read. Um, <laughs> But it wasn't until 1989 when Pixie's Doodle, Doolittle came out that Tim Berners-Lee introduced tables to modern society as we know them today. And that's Tim right there. <laughs> so, and Tim has a really important um, hand in the history, so we'll keep mentioning as we go along. But this is the table um, that's given as an example in the current spec for tables. Uh, and it's very simple. Um, we have um, the border around here. The top is a caption. You should caption your tables um, for accessibility purposes, um, not just for people who are hard of sight um, or hard of hearing, but also just so people know like what the hell you're trying to convey. Um, and then we have table headers going along the top row here, uh, and then we have the vertical columns, and then we have the data that's inside of it, and the information that we get is just the story that we're getting from looking at here. Thank you. <laughs> so this is the source code um, of the table that we're looking at, and for that little small table, this is like a complicated hodgepodge of nesting. Um, table elements are not so semantic beyond the tag table. Um, caption's good, but like T head, T R, T H, um, T D, all that sort of stuff like that. Like T D, I, I don't know why it's called T D to be quite honest, um, but 
it's just kind of a mess, but it's just something we have to deal with because that's in the spec. Um, but this introduction to tables to modern society led society to start using them to hold um, not just tangible things like the puzzle in my computer on my dining room table back in Jersey City, but also to hold tabular data. Um, and it spread like wildfire. Um, GeoCities help sites were all over tables um, and teaching about how to create them. Um, and it was great. But then people started realizing that tables are so structured in a boxy way that they can use them for layout and make their sites look exactly the way they want them to in terms of columns and boxes and stuff like that. Um, and this is before grid layouts and stuff like that were big. Like from that same site, this is an example of a page where they use a table for the layout where the blue is one column, the green is a few other columns. And on the bottom here, above this great back button that lets you know how to go back, um, is it says this is what it would look like without a table, bummer. The text can get hard to read and the background is annoying. And he's right. Um, so this text here floods over all this background and it loses the structure of the rest of the really good page. This page, to me, I actually like stuff like this. And this is why I always get into arguments with people who like talk crap about Comic Sans. Like, I love Comic Sans. I don't love table layouts, but I can see how it has an artistic feel to it that I like. And I love looking at old sites that use table layouts because I love looking at old web pages and like what we thought were cool. It's especially great when you end up on a page and you're like, wow, this is like the dumbest looking page ever. It's so uh, it's the worst. And then like you realize it's like your portfolio from five years ago. <laughs> Boaz knows. <laughs> so art is cool. I love art. Anybody who knows me knows I love art. And I think that table art is cool. In fact, over the past weekend, instead of working on my slides, I decided to start a project on a Google spreadsheet um, called F up my 8-bit art drawing of Jeffrey. Jeffrey's my black cat. Um, that's not a photograph of him, it's an 8-bit drawing of him. Um, and so I took a Google spreadsheet, which is a table, has rows and columns, and I made all the squares the same size. I changed the background of each in order to paint the different colors in, and I posted a link on Twitter, which Twitter is just like full of like, just, it's, it's a shit show. And uh, I said, go for it. The only rules that I had were like, I don't want you to add rows and columns, which people ignored. I don't want you to change the size of rows and columns, people ignored. Um, and everyone just sort of self-policed it, which was really great. Um, here are some examples of some stuff. So I had um, taken screenshots throughout the, the next couple of days of stuff that people were building. They immediately had my cat smoking, um, which I wasn't like very into, but whatever. Um, whoopsie. And uh, here I was out, so I was taking screenshots with my iPhone uh, 6. Uh, and like people were adding images. That wasn't against the rules. I was like, yeah, add images. Um, all sorts of cool stuff that you can do. Um, this person broke the rules, so I immediately deleted it. And that feels good when someone takes a lot of time to do something and then you ruin it. Um, <laughs> We got Taco Zelda um, and all that little cool stuff. If you go to bit.ly slash jqcon my 8 bit art, it will take you to uh, that page. And actually, I can go here now. Um, there are people who right now are drawing um, art here. There's uh, seven people, myself included, and uh, they're moving things uh, all around, and it's really fun. Um, ooh, friggin' hunks, I love that. Um, another cool thing that I learned from doing this, besides that everybody's really into collaborative art, um, and also that tables provide a really great structure for creating it, is that there's this language, Google Script, which is really awesome, and it allows you to um, just like randomize stuff that happens to your spreadsheet. So like, look what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna like, blow up all their spots right now. I'm gonna highlight it all, and I'm gonna call this function, gradient colors, and I just made gradients behind everything that people were drawing. Um, so yeah, so that was a cool thing that was going on. Uh, and then here's some more stuff. I used a terminal, I, I love this, I love the BMO. Um, I made a ter terminal command that uh, saved screenshots of all my, uh, of this stuff while I was out but then I forgot to turn my screensaver off, so I have about like 500 screenshots of my computer with the screensaver on. So if you ever plan on doing this, like turn your screensaver off. 
Also, Google Spreadsheet, like when you have it running forever and there's lots of people, there's like 70 people on it at once, it like will crash. And so even if I didn't have the screensaver on, it would just be a big like non-responsive script warning. So yeah, um, table art is cool. But using tables for content is not cool. Just like in that example that the person gave with the column of information and then content in the main area, like you don't want to do that. Because again, tables are ugly. There's too much manual configuration that you're adding when you can easily do it with other you know, styling. Um, tables are kind of hairy when it comes to responsiveness. Uh, and also, it is not accessible, which I'll talk a little more about when I give um, further examples. But when someone's using a screen reader, which I was going to do examples, but I can't figure out how to get screen readers to work. They're like inaccessible to me, uh, an abled person. Um, it reads tables as if it was data. And that can sound really crazy when you're providing non-tabular content within a table. Um, and Tim Berners-Lee wasn't very happy. Um, about people using tables for layout. So in 1994, which was the year that Green Day's Dookie came out and also um, Pavement's Crooked Rain, Crooked Rain, two very important albums, uh, CSS was uh, invented by um, Tim, Tim Berners-Lee and also, I forgot his name, um, I couldn't pronounce it, but he's now the CTO um, of opera, which is pretty cool that a genre of theater has a CTO. Um, this opera is about um, uh, Internet Explorer debugging, as you can tell <laughs> by the blood. Yeah, laugh it up, laugh it up. And uh, CSS doesn't stand for anything, um, which is another cool thing um, about that language. And Tim was happy, because people are now using CSS for layouts instead of you know just using tables. Uh, but no one's perfect. Um, there are still people that use tables for non-tabular data. Um, and you know, it's whatever. It's none of my business, but it's still out there. Um, but once styling became pretty chill, we started realizing that tables were getting really, really big. Um, data was getting bigger. And as I asked before, when my slides are down, uh, who here has uh, uses JSON to as like their holder of information to pull into a table? A lot of people raised their hands, uh, and that's what we started doing because we had so much big data. Uh, we needed different ways of creating tables as opposed to manually drawing a table with all those TD and TH elements for thousands and thousands of rows. Uh, and so JSON came to be. Uh, JSON. How many people here use JSON? So JSON is cool, um, JavaScript or not. Um, as you can tell from like not knowing whether to use quotes or uh, single quotes, was specified in 2001 by Douglas Crockford. Um, it was also the year that, uh, oh, what, what, what came out in 2001? Probably nothing good. Um, I don't have a Douglas Crockford joke, but I went on his site and I found this cool picture of him um, called chuck.jpg, um, and that's pretty neat. Um, but now that we know how to create tables uh, and have lots of data in tables, we want more from them. How many people here have sites that like, don't just have static tables that show all the data at once? Okay, there's, yeah. So nowadays, we want tables to sort. I'm very well versed in sorting, if you don't know. Um, pagination, which is just always a nightmare. Um, filtering. Uh, which is cool when you have lots and lots of data and you only want to see a specific type. Uh, conditional formatting, uh, especially if you want to take screenshots of tables and add coloring and italicization or whatever to it. Uh, and sometimes column arrangement, depending on what you want to use at your tables. And these are all things that we had at MBA stats. Um, and like the thing with these items that you want to add to your tables is you always have to think like, is this something that should be done on the front end or should be done on the back end? Um, like arrangement was always something that I fought at work because I was like, really, why do we need to allow the user to arrange columns? Who wants them to do that? And usually it was one person at the company that just threw it out and it was like, well, I don't want to spend a lot of time working on that. Um, conditional formatting, I know, is something that I was working on and I don't know if they're ever going to launch it, but um, I wasn't really 
conditional formatting is something that's outside of the realm of building the table. That's something that should be built as like a separate plugin for the, whatever, however the table shows. Uh, filtering, filtering and pagination uh, and sorting are cool, um, but sometimes if you have a lot, a lot, a lot of data, you don't want that to happen on the front end. It can make your site really slow. So um, you might want to consider doing that stuff server side, uh, depending on your situation. Your mileage may vary. But I'm mostly going to be talking about sorting. Um, but as you can tell, I have opinions. Um, I have a lot of opinions. Uh, and my opinions are very important. Uh, so I was talking about this talk, and uh, John David Dalton told me that I should be careful and like be nice and like not talk crap about other technologies, which is rich coming from him. Uh, so I want to leave a disclaimer <laughs> that just because I choose not to use something, it doesn't mean it's bad. And you can replace I with like we. Um, also, my needs are usually very different, no matter even if it's even more important than anyone else's, than everyone other, every other person's needs. All of these options that I'm going to talk about work better in different situations, outside of mine or even for mine. I'm not always right. And do not say that I hate these things or tweet that I hate these things, because then you're going to be in trouble. Also, I actually happen to be correct 100% of the time. So what we want to talk about is that sometimes we want to, or we don't want to, or we can't create tables and their functionality from scratch. Um, some of you guys might call this like reinventing the wheel. And as I've said in many talks before and talk about all the time, I love reinventing the wheel. Uh, fortunately, I don't have to all the time at tables because there are a lot of people who have solved that problem by creating table frameworks and toolkits, a lot of which I end up using, even beyond the MBA. I cannot escape tables no matter how fast I can run or scream bloody murder. So, um, whoa, that was loud. Um, SlickGrid is a really, uh, a really awesome um, plugin for pulling in tables. Uh, unfortunately, the person who develops it is, uh, I guess, busy and, and put a disclaimer on their GitHub back in March that um, they're not going to be like very responsive when it comes to support. Um, support is a really important aspect when a company like the MBA chooses to overhaul their site and take in a whole other uh, plugin. Um, but if you're dealing with tables that have lots and lots and lots of rows, um, SlickGrid is good to use. Um, JQGrid was a uh, plugin I used for a, uh, a startup I used to work for. They use the MIT license, and I'm all about open source, obviously, um, but it kind of gets hairy when it comes to like paying for it. And when uh, people create things and they make you pay for it, and they have like lots and lots of different rules for like how much you pay based on how many sites you're using. I come from the world of WordPress development, uh, and so I kind of got, get iffy about that. Also, if you check out the upper right-hand corner, that JavaScript logo is on points. Um, <laughs> Super into that. The Norden table is pretty cool. Um, it comes with an extra leaf, so it could fit a couple of extra people. I'm not too into the unfinished wood. Um, I do have a cat that jumps up on there a lot, so I don't feel safe getting that. But there is a new Inga Torp at IKEA um, that has a darker wood. I'm not sure if I need the drawer, and I don't like when plugins and furniture come with things that I don't need unless I ask them for it. Um, it's kind of like ordering a laptop, and all you want is a laptop with a CD drive, and you get a laptop with a CD drive and three floppy drives that you're not going to use. Um, also, the Ingatorp is new, and I like to wait for things to be out for a while so they build up a community and like I get good reviews and know which one to use. Because again, you don't want to spend a lot of time on that. And then there's Dojo Toolkit, um, which I think is awesome. Um, and you're going to think that I don't think it's awesome, but I have, st I have Dojo stickers up here. So that should verify that um, and silence all of those remarks. Um, Dojo Toolkit is great because it does a lot, a lot, a lot of stuff. Um, but if you want to just do one thing, it can get a little bit overwhelming, which means like maybe you should look at other options, which is why there are lots of options for both physical tables and digital ones as well. And this brings me to the description of the talk that I propose, and that is the MBA case study part of this here talk. So when I joined the MBA 
in, I believe it was May of 2000 and whatever, um, they were using Dojo on the stats site. And it was cool. Um, it looked a little different from the way the site did today, but that was just because of design. Um, and it did the things that they wanted. Um, it had uh, sorting, which is really important. Um, all the filtering and arrangement and stuff was done outside of Dojo, as it should be, I feel like. Um, I like everything to be modular and not too coupled with all the technologies, because then if Dojo were to update to 2.0, it would be like really weird and, and tasking to try to do that with everything built into it customized. Um, but Dojo Toolkit, we were not using anything but Data Grid, which is like one of like a ton of stuff that Dojo has available. Um, and so we had like 30 megabytes of, of stuff of Dojo, but we weren't using much of it. Um, and it was hard to figure out what I did or did not need without going into the code and looking at what the requires were. And they were in multiple folders. And this will be better when 2.0 comes out, because I think that they're going to be getting rid of the Dojo X directory. It's sort of all going to be merged together, which will be great. Um, and it was also hard to figure out how to build our own features into it once we had created the table. Um, and then we also ran into some issues of accessibility. When companies like the NBA have websites, and we do, NFL, even like large you know, retail sites, um, a lot of people, not just patent trolls, um, but folks who are very uh, much sticklers about accessibility, uh, and I'm not comparing people who are sticklers of accessibility to patent trolls, oh my gosh. Um, they like <laughs> They like to go to their companies and they will sue them. Um, there's lots of different lawsuits that you put against a company, but usually when you go against the NBA, you try to get as much money as possible. And there's sort of like whistleblower lawsuits. And I believe whistleblower lawsuits, just the whistleblower gets all the money. Um, so it's really important. A lot of companies spend a lot of money hiring consulting companies to help make sure that when their sites roll out, they're accessible. Um, and also that they're not using like other patents and, you know, I don't know. Basically, the MBA stands for nothing but attorneys, and we'll take it from there. So I'm going to give some examples of uh, some tables that I've, I've built um, to show you. Let me get rid of that. So here is a uh, vanilla table. Um, it's all just HTML, and this is my downloads folder. Um, and uh, so I, if, on the source here, it's just got the regular table tag. Um, you have the body, I have the headers up here, and then I have multiple rows and stuff like that. No big deal. I hand wrote all of this, and actually my example was going to have, um, excuse me, uh, like 50 rows, but then like after like eight, I was like bored. I was like, I'm not writing this, and this is why we, you know, use JSON and other um, feeds to bring in our uh, information. Um, Angular, how many people here use Angular? That's chill. Um, at the NBA, our international stat site is built in Angular, um, and we were going to use ng table, which I've used in other stuff, and it's just a directive for tables, uh, and it's cool, and it works. Um, it creates, it keeps the table tag. It doesn't like nest divs within divs and stuff like that, um, but it gives you like everything all at once, and you have to tell it to stop. Like this is the same table, and I initialized it. And it automatically gave me sorting, um, but it also gave me pagination um, and also one row per page. Now, I can go into the, the call of it and update that, but when I want to add plugins and like, I want to initialize something, I want to initialize it minimally. Um, I want my table to just look like the table before it adds all those bells and whistles and stuff. Um, but otherwise, it's a pretty well-written directive, um, and I have used it before. Um, then we have a dojo table. Now, the dojo table is styled a little bit differently because if you get it, um, let me try to turn off the styling. Let's see. If I turn off the CSS, Um, this is my inline style. Um, the table sort of gets like all jumbled up. Um, you see how my first row bleeds into my H1 tag that's above there. Um, and I can't reach the header because all that stuff is above it 
to hide it. Um, so the style sheet, the initial style sheet, is required, um, which is, to me, I'm not super into. Um, Another thing about Dojo, Dojo comes with a lot of really cool stuff that you want your tables to do, um, downloading tables, exporting them into spreadsheets and all that cool stuff. This is stuff we didn't need at the NBA because we didn't want people to just download all of our data. You can just scrape it. Um, but <laughs> but um, one issue that I did have um, was accessibility. And if you look at the source, um, you start off the dojo grid with a div tag, and everything inside of it are just div tags. It looks like a table, and it looks great. Um, I could select a row, and it styles it for me, and all that stuff. Um, I can't get the context menu when I right click. Um, I couldn't figure out how to get that to like stop doing that. Um, but otherwise, all the things are built in. But if you use screen readers, it is hard to tell that this is a table, and so um, I was going to have a screen reader demo for you, um, but I didn't want to do audio, so I will gladly pretend to be a screen reader. Um, if I was a screen reader and I was to read a row, um, read this page, and the person tabs over, because they know how to use a screen reader, to the table, it will say tabular data. And then it will say name, size, kind, date added, notes, Dijnokampung, 77 KB ping image, and it just keeps rattling it off. Um, thank you. Um, the dojo, um, they have to keep tabbing through each cell. So it would say name, and then you have to hit tab. Size, tab, kind, which is easier, I think, than, and this is working with the built-in Mac um, voiceover, is easier for the person to understand, but that person needs to know that they need to keep tabbing to get the rest of the information. So imagine not only having to use a screen reader to access the web, but having to understand how every table plugin that is used, or however anything, any tool that's used on the page, having to know how to navigate through those elements and directives and all that sort of stuff like that with the software that you probably spent thousands and thousands of dollars in, because if you depend on a screen reader for your web, uh, for uh, accessing the web, you most likely don't use the OS built-in screen reader, because it's incredibly difficult to use. Um, so that was just an issue that we ran into. And sports stats is hard. Um, we don't just have sorting and column arrangement and formatting and all that stuff. Um, we also um, needed to handle the fact that sometimes players were injured and so there was no stats for that game. And like, how do we visualize that? Well, we'll say like DNP for did not play. Well, if we're sorting a table and instead of data, the player says DNP did not play, like where should it go? Should that be at the bottom of the table or should that be at the top? And if it's paginated, uh, people are like, well, we want it to always show on the, the page that is visible, the did not play players, and keep it on the bottom. And so you're keeping those rows static and ignoring them as you're paginating, but also keeping it at the bottom when sorting. So it got super, super complicated. Um, and so we couldn't use Dojo. Um, we couldn't use JQ Grid. Um, so I had to reinvent the wheel and roll my own. Um, and as I said before, I love reinventing the wheel. But I love reinventing the wheel like I love vomiting rainbows. Like sometimes, like I, I take anti-seizure medication and, and I have, sometimes I just like, it makes me sick. Uh, so it's something that I have to do and I don't like it. If I'm going to, I might as well like vomit rainbows. So I don't like dealing with these complexities of tables and stuff like that. And I don't like reinventing the wheel, but if it makes my life easier as a developer and also for the future of my dev team, um, then so be it. I have to vomit rainbows. And so I created JS Grid. The JS stands for Jen Schiffer, of course. Um, and it was um, pretty cool. And this is what's used on MBA stats now. So if I go to this tab, um, so this is e, uh, the MBA stats page for the Brooklyn Nets. Um, and we have multiple tables here. 
Um, and they're very pretty, thanks to my coworker, Nick, who designed them, and he's a senior engineer. And yeah, sometimes we put in our own design input, which is pretty cool. Um, and we can save images from it. We can arrange the columns if we want to and hide them, because sometimes editorial would be like, oh, I only want to show these, uh, these columns, and then save it as an image. And then it like downloads the image, and we're good to go. Uh, and I can just open that up. And it saves the table as um, a canvas, and the canvas is saved as a PNG file. Um, not before, uh, on the server side, we add like this hideous timestamp to it. And that'll come up eventually. Um, so I love open source. Um, and when I spend a lot of things that I, on time on things that I think that would be really useful to people, I open source it. When I spend a lot of time on things that are not useful to anybody, I open source it. Open source everything. Um, but like the NBA is like, uh, no. Um, and that's something that you run into sometimes. Your company is not into open source. And like I can't convince like a company full of like rich old white guys, like, hey, open source is really cool. Because these are some people that think that like Vim is owned by a guy and anybody that uses it owns the code that you write in it, you know? And this is not uncommon. I've talked to lots of people that work in companies. How many people work in companies um, or have worked in companies in the past, if you want, want to talk about your current company, that is afraid of open source development? I'm fortunate that I work for a company that's where that's not the case. Um, so I decided um, a couple a, like a week ago, but I've only worked on it in the past couple of days, um, to roll uh, a new version. It's not JS grid, um, it's something more minimal, not coupled with sports data, and I call it Timbles uh, JS. It's a jQuery plugin. Uh, you can go to github.com slash jenshiver slash timbles.js, um, and I named it after my coworker, Tim Brannion. That's, that's him and his table. See, there's stuff on it, it's, it's real cute. Um, so Tim is one of the best programmers that I know, and I learned a lot from him um, while trying to go over some things with tables over the past couple of years. And he happened to like crash into a wall on a skateboard when I was talking to somebody about how I didn't know what to name my plugin. And so I was like, I'll name it after Tim. Um, so I'm going to demo uh, Timbles for you. Um, so here we go, Timbles is on GitHub. Now, unlike things that I've launched in other talks, like JortSort at JSConf, this is actually a real useful thing. Uh, <laughs> although, to be honest, JortSort's in RxJS now, so um, who am I to joke? Um, so Timbles is a jQuery plugin. Um, when you load it after jQuery, it takes an existing table um, where you properly name the classes of each row so you can attribute them to the header. Um, and by calling dot timbles on your table um, and saying sorting true, because again, I don't like things to just start off right off the bat. Um, I want to have to tell the plugin, because eventually this will have lots of features in it, what I want it to do or what I, what I don't want it to do. Um, it will make that table sort. So in this example, I have a table, and I called Timbles on it, and it just allows me to sort my table. Nothing else. It doesn't add any tags to it. Um, it just looks just like our vanilla table, all the TRs and the TDs and the TBQHs and all that sort of fun stuff. Um, and it just allows sorting. Um, but in the case that you have a JSON file and you want to pull information into it, you can call Timbles and give it um, a data configuration um, where you have the JSON file, my example, data.json, uh, and what the column names are so that it knows when it's building the cells into that table what column those should um, end up in. And uh, it adds for sorting the sort uh, hyphen ASC for ascending or sort hyphen DESC um, for descending to the header so that you can add CSS to add like triangles so you know whether it's going up and down or not or whatever. So I just use the content, um, I use the after and content property uh, and attributes for adding that. Um, so it's fairly simple. It doesn't do much. Um, I also like it. I rolled this out, I guess, in like three hours worth of work. 
uh, which is sort of a case to show that if you are dealing with something that's simple like table sorting or, or really anything, and you have like a wide variety of plugins in front of you and it gets overwhelming, if it's a simple task, it might be worth just rolling it out yourself and not going through all the other stuff that you have. But if you don't have the time and you have a lot of things that you need it to do, then things like JQGrid and Dojo Toolkit and um, Slick Grids and stuff like that are pretty great to use. And then this demo is the same table, but the information is pulled in through JSON and it looks exactly the same way. And like, what things would I want to add in the future? Of course, those things that everybody always wants, pagination, um, and that's pretty much all else that I'm gonna add to it, um, to be honest, because again, there's lots of stuff that does everything else. This is just very minimal, um, and it keeps it as a table, and therefore it's accessible, and people who, need, who use screen readers aren't being like yelled at and having to tab whenever they want to uh, go at it. But like, why would you use Timbles.js over any of these other plugins is probably something that you're thinking. And it's like, I don't, I don't know. Um, and honestly, like, I don't care. If you think it's stupid, then that's fine. Again, there's so many other things out there that you can use. But if you're like me, and you just needed something really simple and really minimal because you want to add things to it, um, it's a good base to go off of. Use it as a base for your own table plugin. Open source, I love it. So, in conclusion, art is important. Data is important. We all know this, it's everywhere. Um, information is important, and how we display the data in art is inclusive to displaying that important information. Wheels are important, whether you make them or use someone else's. And therefore, tables are important. Um, and anyone who doesn't think so is a dingus. Um, so, thank you very much. Um, I am on the internet all over, Jen Schiffer on Twitter, my website soundgarden.technology, I'm on GitHub at Jen Schiffer, and you can email me literally at butts at paulirish.com. Um, so if you have any questions, <laughs> find me on the internet. And again, thank you so much for having me. <laughs> Woo! Um. Do we have any questions for Jen? Don't go too far, for I'm about to admonish you with information about the party. Uh, that's not what the word admonish means. Don't correct me later. Um, I know that. I have uh, see me for dojo stickers. First of all, any questions? None. You, you f solve? Oh. Yeah. Where, where did you get your table? Where I got my table, there's this place called Sleep and Sheep in Jersey City on Newark Avenue. Um, you order out of an Ashley Furniture catalog. Nothing is in the showroom, but they will deliver it to your apartment. They will build it there, and it's pretty chill. And it was like 400 bucks, and it's going to last more than a year, like all of my past IKEA furniture. Well, let's give that's, one more. That's a good. That's a good last question, right? <laughs> give it up. Give it up for Jen. Woo! Thank you.